Hi guys, Andre from Convey of Randomness here, and today I'll be looking at this, the Roku Streaming Stick Plus. This is Roku's premium 4K streaming device, the Streaming Stick Plus, which adds smoother streaming with its additional long-range wireless receiver and remote control with voice commands, compared to the more cheaper versions of the Roku range, which offer either the same or near same picture quality in either HD, 4K or 4K HDR like the Plus, and only offer less performance and Wi-Fi capabilities and a less equipped remote control. In the box, you get the streaming stick, the USB power cable with attached long range wireless receiver, voice command remote control with its TV volume controls to the side, and predetermined app buttons, useful if those apps are relevant to you the power adapter and the extender cable. Getting started with the Roku streaming stick requires you to first create a Roku account, which can be a bit annoying to some, but if you think about it, if you get a Chromecast or Fire Stick, then you've already signed up for your account previously within your Gmail or Amazon services. Just a word of caution though, when you are signing up, it will ask you to add a payment card, not for any immediate purchases, but in case you decide to purchase a Roku service in the future. Installation is easy, as all you need for your TV to have is a HDMI slot. Because of the Roku stick shape, this may not fit your TV depending on where the HDMI slots are situated on the TV. As you can see on this TV, there is one slot on the bottom of the TV which would not fit the stick, but the two spaces on the side will. If you still wanted the stick but think that your TV HDMI slots wouldn't be able to accommodate the stick, then you can purchase low cost angled HDMI adapters. If you've got a TV with a USB slot, then you can power the Roku by plugging the USB cable into the TV, but if not, plug the USB cable into the power adapter. Once you've plugged everything in, connect your stick to the Wi-Fi and then you're ready to go. You're going to get the standard streaming apps that are going to be region specific depending on where you live in the world, but you get Apple TV, Netflix, Disney Plus, Google Play Movies and TV, Spotify, Prime Video, and where I am in the UK, all four, BT Sport, BBC iPlayer and more, which are all easy and straightforward to download and remove. There are a whole range of other third party applications which are a little bit hit and miss and offer a range of free or subscription based movies, TV shows, games and interactive app options. The main draw for this streaming stick is its long range wireless capabilities. It gives you up to four times increased range and a stronger signal compared to other Roku streaming devices. Although I'm limited to testing those claims due to the size of my house, I put the streaming stick in the room which has the poorest internet signal, which incidentally is this one that I film all my videos in, I did get nine non-stop uninterrupted streaming when watching 4k content not the high speeds that I know my router is capable of facilitating to devices that are close to the router but certainly quicker than my iPhone on the same Wi-Fi network inches away from the streaming stick the streaming stick plus comes with a remote control with the added voice control function the other two Roku streaming devices also come with a remote but what sets this one apart from the other two is not only the voice control but also while the other remotes act as a classic infrared remote that would require you to see the device this remote wirelessly connects to the streaming stick so it doesn't require you to point towards the device although this remote works as expected some people may or may not use the voice control as the fluid nature of the remote's control allows for smooth navigation around the Roku's user interface like many other remotes like this it has the ability to control the volume of your TV although the TV I was using was listed I was unable to find the appropriate code to control the volume, which means I'm still using the TV's standard remote in addition to the Roku one. Roku's operating system, which some people may be familiar with if you've ever used a Now TV box in the UK, which was actually in fact powered by Roku. It's easy to use and very customizable. It's good to use an operating system that doesn't push its own agenda by wanting you to play their recommended apps, but instead allows you to order the apps you want in any way that you like. Good thing about this is that it's compatible with Apple HomeKit, Google and Alexa Assistants and Hubs, allowing that ease of control with remote automation. And it's one of the few streaming devices that has the ability to connect to all three. If you've got an Apple device like an iPhone, iPad or Mac, the Roku is compatible with AirPlay, allowing you to easily screen mirror from your device, stream your videos, photos, music or other media to your TV. So why share your family memories on a small screen of your phone when you can actually effortlessly project it to your TV? One of the features that I really like is the interactivity with the Roku mobile app. Available from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, this free app allows you to easily control your streaming stick without the need of using your remote control allowing you to initiate voice commands, cast media to the device and enjoy private listening 
where you where the audio from the Roku streaming stick on the TV can be outputted to your phone and headphones, so you and three of us can enjoy your favourite programmes or music without disturbing anyone else. Costing around £50 definitely puts it in the same sort of price range compared to those other 4K streaming devices, but it's definitely an option that will be convenient if you've got an old TV that with a HDMI slot that you want to future-proof and convert it into a smart TV giving you access to free or paid TV, music or movies, or for someone who wants different options if the option for cable or satellite TV isn't available to them, and certainly a more reliable device compared to some of those Android boxes available on the market. Oh. I'll let you into a little secret. I've seen the Roku Streaming Stick Plus in a very frequent sales being sold for as little as £25 and at that price is definitely a must have for those reasons I described earlier and puts it for me ahead of the other Roku streaming options. It's easy to navigate even for the most modest novice as an introduction into the smart TV world and it's one gigabyte RAM processor means that it's going to accomplish those tasks quickly without even breaking a sweat, especially with its enhanced Wi-Fi capabilities ensuring less annoying buffering weights while you're watching your favourite movies in quality up to 4K with HDR if you have a compatible TV. If you like the Roku brand or want something that is very portable or for it to complement any of your existing smart home devices, then depending on your TV setup may sway your decision in which one of these you get. The direct plug-in nature of the Streaming Stick Plus will be preferable, but not limited to a wall-mounted TV with its cleaner, out-of-sight aesthetic compared to the Roku Premier and Express which are cheaper options but come in small set-top boxes instead. I'll put the links to where you can get the Roku Streaming Stick Plus in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Why don't you watch one of the two videos below? Or both if you want. Click before the time runs out. Three, two, one, go.